everyone it is danny and welcome to this update video i really hope you have been enjoying your thursday thus far now we're going to be talking about what is happening across the atlantic as usual but also we're going to be delving into last hurricane season in terms of the retirement of any names so i'll be discussing that later down in this video pretty much for the bulk of it so Looking at the current satellite's imagery, we've got that little blob out there of some activity, some thunderstorms. That is in association with the surface trough. And there is another system which is leaving North America right now. That resulted in a lot of uh, thunderstorm activity and even some heavy rain in parts of the northern Bahamas. But uh, looking further to the west, we can see that other system developing in the U.S. right now. And this is bringing along with it a threat of tornadoes and other dangerous impacts going to the african coast we can see a lot of activity popping up this afternoon uh, which is not really surprising to see along the intertropical convergence zone also some thunderstorms in parts of northern south america which includes parts of southern colombia venezuela and in parts of the guyanas zooming into the caribbean though much is not really happening just some passing showers across some areas at the most but it's been a pretty warm and tranquil day for the most part and as we're going to be heading through the rest of today, there could be some additional showers in parts of the Bahamas and Florida, uh, the northern Bahamas and Florida, that is, and then for the central and southern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, which is not really expected. There may be some afternoon showers in parts of Cuba, especially over in the west, even near the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and within the Windward Islands, as we can see. But going to the Leeward Islands and Virgin Islands, much is not really expected. Same story for the ABC Islands and most of Central America, including parts of Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and even some spots in Costa Rica and Panama. Things are a lot more active for South America. Now, it's been a windy day for some areas, especially in the southeast, and winds have slowly been kicking up in the northwestern Caribbean as well, uh, offshore Belize, within the vicinity of the Bay Islands of Honduras. We can see those darker shadings of purple and that blue as well. Winds up to 20 knots, even a bit more, with stronger gusts. Same story, ABC Islands, as we can see all those blue shadings, but elsewhere is a little bit on the tranquil side in terms of the winds. So let's talk about the 2023 hurricane season. So it was an active season and uh, it was an El Nino season as well. Usually El Nino results in more suppressed hurricane seasons. However, last year uh, is the fourth most active season in recorded history. Why? Because of the above average temperatures. However, we'll talk more about that in future videos. So uh, we're looking at the names and whether we could see a name being retired from last year. So let's talk about it. I compiled this list earlier of the retired tropical cyclone names from 2014 up to 2022. So in 2014, there were no retired tropical cyclone names. In 2015, there were Joaquin and Erica. 2016, Matthew and Otto. 2017, Harvey, Irma, Maria, and Nate. 2018, Florence and Michael. 2019 Dorian, which currently holds the record for the strongest uh, tropical cyclone ever in the Atlantic Basin outside the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And then 2020, the most active hurricane season in recorded history to date that produced 13 named storms. The names Laura, Eta, and Iota were retired. Now, Laura is from the designated list to that hurricane season, but Eta and Iota were Greek letters. Well, they are Greek letters. And uh, because of some issues surrounding the retirement of Greek letters, that is when the uh, World Meteor Meteorological Organization decided that, hey, we're going to discontinue it because it's going to cause some confusion. It's going to cause some problems in the future. And that is how the now supplemental list came into being, just an additional list of regular names that can be retired in the case of the hurricane season being a lot more active, producing more than uh, 21 named systems, which would exhaust the list. So if there is another storm, then they would resort to the supplemental list to name it. And if it is so strong and destructive where it has to be retired, that wouldn't have any complications. 2021, Ida was retired and 2022, Ian and Fiona. So the two most recently retired names 
Ian and Fiona, they were replaced with Idris and Farah for the 2028 hurricane season. So the lists rotate every six years. And that's the reason for retirement. It's not just one list for the season and we never see this list again. No, they are recycled every six years. However, there was a very destructive storm that resulted in widespread devastation, lots of fatalities. Then the World Meteorological Organization may retire that particular name and replace it with another of the same letter and gender. So for the 2023 hurricane season, what is the most likely candidate? Well, for me, that would be Idalia. So Idalia rapidly intensified in the Gulf and uh, it resulted in a total of 12 fatalities, eight direct, four indirect, and around $3.6 billion in damages, and that is uh, in US dollars. So it was a category four system. It rapidly strengthened and it did quite a number on parts of the US, especially for Florida. Now, there have been other systems that did a lot worse, but the names were not retired. For example, there was Isaias back in 2020. So Isaias resulted in $4.8 billion in damages and 17 fatalities. However, it was a Cat 1 at peak intensity and it was not retired. So that name is still on the list of rotating names for the hurricane season. And in that same season, there were other destructive systems as well that weren't retired, such as Sally. Sally produced $7.3 billion in damages and a total of nine fatalities. It was a Category 2 hurricane at peak intensity with winds up to 110 miles per hour, but it was not retired. And uh, Idalia did way less damage compared to Sally. And uh, even going to 2022 when Fiona was retired, I mean, Fiona was a Cat 4 and resulted in around $3 billion in damages, if not more, and 29 fatalities. So all in all, it's possible that Idalia could be retired. It was a Cat 4. It did some substantial damage. And of course, lives were lost. So we'll see what the World Meteorological Organization has to say. And they will meet in Panama uh, from the 17th to the 22nd of March. So usually it's not the same year, but rather the following spring when they meet and uh, names could be retired from the previous hurricane season. So in this case, 2023, we'll see what they have to say. But I think that there is a chance of Idalia being retired. However, if it is not retired, this will be the first time in what, nine years when no tropical cyclone names are retired from hurricane season. And it really goes to show how active the recent years have been. And it also shows it only takes one system to do the damage. I mean, look at Ian, for example, back in 2022. But of course, I'll be keeping you guys posted on that as time goes by. And that is what I wanted to share with you in this update video. So I really do hope you found it to be very informative. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.